guys! Welcome back to Adriana Flips. Um, I just filmed this entire video, but you couldn't see, like, it was, like, here. So I'm refilming it again. And today I'm going to be doing something a bit different. I'm going to be doing a story time. I've never done one of these before. I'm going to give you guys a bit of a backstory first, just, like, a little bit of information to help you comprehend the story. So, um, my family, so it was going to be my mom, my sister, and I, and our family friends, it was a couple, like a husband and a wife and their kid, and we were all going to be going to Cancun, Mexico for, for 10 days. On December 31st, we were going to be flying to Houston, spending New Year's in Houston in a hotel, and from Houston flying to Cancun the next day. We were flying separate than our family friends. They were they flew in the day before. We got to the airport. We were so excited. We hadn't been on a trip like this in a while. We flew to Houston and on the plane the seats were two and two like this. So it was me, my sister, my mom, and then someone, uh, another person that we didn't know. So we got on the plane, we sat down, and my mom had been talking the whole time to the girl beside her because they were around the same age, they had a lot in common, uh, they talked the whole time, and eventually they got to the point of discussion where my mom was telling her which hotel we were staying at and our plan, our vacation. So we were flying into IAH, and my mom told her the hotel we were staying at, and she was like, that hotel is not by IAH. That hotel is like an hour away from IAH, because the hotel was supposed to be 10 minutes away from IAH, and there would be a shuttle coming to pick us up, at IH and take us to the hotel. But apparently, we weren't unaware of this, but there are two airports in Houston, and we had only thought it was IH. And so my mom had booked the hotel that was close to the other airport. And Stacy, that's the name of the girl my mom was sitting beside, had said that the hotel was over an hour away. And my mom didn't definitely did not want to draw get a shuttle from an hour away. And so Stacy, the girl we had met on the plane that day, invited us to stay at her house on New Year's. But the catch is, her and her husband were going to be away at a New Year's party. And now this is sketchy. This was sketchy. We were like, oh. My mom did not want to pay more money. And Stacy had offered to drive us to the airport the next day. And my mom, my mom had been talking to her the whole plane. She could tell she was a good, trustworthy person. And I don't want any hate comments on this part, please. So we decided to stay at her house. And we got to her house. It was a really nice house. Um, it was like 20 minutes away from the airport. Not bad. So we stayed there the night. And then the next day, we woke up. We were packing to go to um, the IH to fly to Cancun, like our plan. And so we were packing. And um, my mom noticed something. She noticed that in her suitcase, the passports weren't there. So she was started to panic. We looked through all of our suitcases, all of our bags, and we couldn't find them. So my mom was like, okay, well, where are the passports? She told Stacy this. We looked around her house. Maybe we left them somewhere. We looked everywhere. Bottom line, we looked everywhere. We couldn't find them. They weren't there. So we, um, they weren't there. Like, no, they weren't there. Stacy was like, I'm going to take you to the airport. And you guys can go talk to Airline Blueberry is what I'm going to call it. Because I don't want to hate on them um, a lot. and like, So we're going to call it Airline Blueberry. So she was like, you guys can go talk to the desk at Airline Blueberry. Maybe you left them on the plane. And my mom has a habit of every time we travel, she puts the passports in the pocket of the seat in front of her. So she is thinking that she left them there. Uh, my mom also couldn't find her jacket and inside my mom's jacket pocket there were my sister's sunglasses so we were missing sunglasses jacket and passport and my mom knew for a fact she knew 100 percent sure that she had left the jacket underneath the seat she was like 90 percent sure she left the passports in the pocket so we go to the airport stacy drops us off and we go to the information desk at airline blueberry and we um, talked to them, we told them what happened, how we couldn't find our passports, and we had a flight to catch in a couple hours. So they were like super nice about it, and then they told us that they were going to contact and go get the girl who had cleaned the plane last night. So they went to go get her, and the girl had had my mom's jacket and my sister's sunglasses. 
but they didn't have my mom's passports, they weren't in the pockets of the jacket. She said she did not see them on the plane. So at this point my mom was getting more worried, I was getting more worried, we were all getting more worried. We were like, okay, well, we're probably not going to make our flight to Cancun now. And we didn't know where to look, so they sent us to, we were in Terminal A right now. They sent us to, I think it was Terminal E, to go look in the main um, airport lost and found. So we went to Terminal E and because we couldn't get through security, we couldn't take the fast train, we had to take this little underground slow little go-kart train. So we took it to Terminal E. And we got out at Terminal E, we went to talk to the people at the main lost and found. And don't quote me on this, I don't remember what day of the week it was. I think it was a Sunday. It was January 1st, but I don't remember what day of the week it was. I think it was a Sunday, and I'm just going to go with saying it was a Sunday. And because it was a Sunday, the main lost and found was closed. So we didn't have a way of looking inside of it. So the person at the main lost and found, they had told us to... Um, go check every single terminal's lost and found in case it fell out of her purse in the airport and someone turned it in at a random terminal. So IAH has terminals A, B, C, D, and E and we went to go check all of those terminals. Nothing. Not a single passport. We talked to so many people who had been sending us in directions all across the airport. So at this point my mom was like, hey, well, we're not getting to Mexico today. We can't even get home today. Like, how? what are we going to do? So there was a Marriott hotel inside IAH. So we spent the night there. And in the morning, we went to go talk to more people looking for it. And eventually, someone sent us to go file a police report. Because in IAH, there's a police station. So we went to the terminal where the police station was in. And we filed the police report. And the police officer was super nice. We told him our scenario, what happened. And he said that there's a, a place where we could go get new passports in Dallas. And Dallas is a while away from Houston. Um, we would have to take a bus. So he had told us that that would be our best option. But my mom refused to do that because she was certain that the passports were in the seat and that the lady just hadn't checked there. So we filed a report. We had checked the main Austin found because it was open now. And there was nothing. And we got the police officer was nice and he offered to check one more time in the safe where he had the key for so we checked it he checked the whole thing and he couldn't find anything so we were like okay well how are we gonna get anywhere we don't have our passports and we are Canadian citizens we are not from the USA so we are like we're from a different country and we were in Houston it's not like we could drive to the border it's not like we'd be in Montana or Seattle we could drive home we were in Houston at the bottom the south so we couldn't really there wasn't a way to get there and you can't take a flight without your passports. So my mom didn't want to ask Stacy to spend another night. So she had remembered that when I was in kindergarten, I was best friends with this boy named Mario. And she remembered that they had moved to Houston. And at the time, our families were great family friends and they hung out all the time. We were really close. And so my mom called up Mario's mom, her name was Veronica, and she told her our scenario. She was super nice about it. She came and picked us up from the airport and took us to her house. She let us spend the night at her house. And it was like, like they have a big family. They have three kids and the mom and the dad. So they have a family of five and we, we had a family of three with us. So we um, all sat at the table and we talked for a long time and it was like a big reunion it was a lot of fun that part and my mom had called the Canadian Embassy that night and they, she was waiting for calls back she had talked to the pilot of that plane to get him to look there he said he was checking that like in the um, in the uh, pocket he said he was checking it and but then he called her back he hadn't found them the Canadian Embassy had called her I don't remember what she had to talk to them about again but she was calling them and Veronica was like okay I'm gonna take you guys to um, the mall we're gonna go to the mall and you guys are gonna have a nice day where we're not gonna worry about this we're just gonna wait to get a call back on the passports oh my mom had also been calling the Calgary airport because it turned out that there was a way they could possibly fly us to Calgary without our passports but um, 
the Calgary airport would have to be the one to let us in and my dad is a cop so they had got my dad to go talk to the people at the front of the airport and tell them to let us in if we flew there because we wouldn't have a passport and Canada is really strict about who they let in so they had to make sure that we would be able to go in that we were citizens so they would show them like our birth certificates everything and I'm pretty sure they did agree to let us in so we weren't going to worry about that all day. We went to the mall. It was a really nice mall. We spent the day there. Um, my sister, like we all went to the American Girl place because I used to be obsessed with American Girl dolls and now my sister is. She kind of goes through all the phases I go through and now um, she got a new doll. We went to the cafe. I went to Pax and I got some clothes from there because I really like that store and they don't have it in Canada. And then we decided we were going to spend another night with them. and. It, in the morning, they were going to take us to the airport to try and get a flight to Calgary. So we went to the airport and the guy we talked to, he was super nice. He was like, yeah, I can get you a flight to Calgary, um, but my shift ends at 3.30. And he, he needed to call Calgary Airport himself and tell them this. So he had to wait for a call back from, Cal we had to wait for a call back from Calgary Airport. And so we had waited and we got the call back at so his shift had just ended so Calgary Airport were like yeah we're gonna let you guys in so we got the call back at 4 and his shift had just um, ended and Airline Blueberry is sister companies with Airline Raspberry and so we flew Airline Blueberry there we we're gonna fly Airline Raspberry back so we were at Airline Raspberry and we we're talking to them Airline Raspberry is super helpful great and so uh, the people at Airline Blueberry were not so helpful. So, Airline Raspberry, uh, his shift was over, so a new person was there. So we went to go talk to the new person, and this new person was like, Oh no, I can't get you to a new country with that. I can fly you anywhere in the States without a passport, but not to um, not to Canada. But we were telling him how the person before had said that they could. We got permission from the airport. He was like, No, I'm not flying you to Canada. And we were like, This is not fair because the guy had said he could and so the best offer he had given us was to fly us to Denver and from Denver to Great Falls and from Great Falls have our grandparents pick us up and drive us across the border so that was our only option at that point we we're like okay we'll go to Denver so we got the flight to Denver we got through security so we weren't waiting on like the outside of the Houston airport we were inside the Houston airport and as we were walking um, to our gate my mom got a phone call and she got a phone call from someone in Winnipeg and they said that they had our passports and my mom was like what how did you get our passports and apparently what happened was the passports were exactly where my mom had been telling everyone they were the whole time in the seat and the, somebody actually properly cleaned the plane this time in Winnipeg and had found them so our passports were now in Winnipeg so they were going to mail them to our house um, while we were going to fly to Denver, go Great Falls, and then drive across the border. It was going to be a long day. So we got on our flight to Denver, we flew to the Denver airport, and because we didn't have our passports, we had to go through security again. So we were in line for security, and there was security was closed. There was a huge line for security, and it was all closed. They had search dogs in the security zone. zone. They had cops people everywhere the line took like an hour to get through security and we had missed our flight from denver to great falls because security was closed so we don't know why security was closed we missed the original flight to great falls so we had to go the next morning and my mom was not risking to miss that flight she didn't refuse to get a hotel because she didn't want to miss it and there was not a marriott in that airport so in the denver airport so we had to what we were going to do was sleep in the airport at our gate and go in the morning first thing. And um, in Calgary, at the Calgary airport, Calgary, they meet a lot of your accommodations. So at the Calgary airport, not every chair has a handle. It's like every third chair has a handle so that if somebody needs to sleep in the airport, they can lay down. And they also bring out mattresses at the Calgary airport for people to sleep on, blankets and pillows and clean stuff. And like, this is just another example of accommodations in Calgary. You never see homeless people in Calgary because they have places to go. There's a place called the Mustard Seed where they can all go and get fed every day, every meal. And there's another place, I don't remember what it's called, where they can go to sleep. And, like, that can be their home. They don't have to pay. It's accommodations. So, 
Um, but in the Denver airport, every single chair had the handles. So there was no way you could lay down. Um, unless you went underneath the handles, but it was really tight. It was super uncomfortable doing that. So we just leave sitting down on the handles using our, like, and our suitcases were in Great Falls. So we had to, like, use our, uh, carry-ons, which didn't have a lot in them, as, like, pillows. It was, like, backpacks that we brought as carry-ons. And, um... So, we didn't have any clothes, toiletries, we had to sleep there. I didn't sleep. I cannot sleep on places that's not a bed. I know that's like picky, but that's just me. I, can now, I can't sleep in cars, planes, um, airports, just beds. So, I couldn't sleep. I was trying really hard to sleep. I couldn't sleep. I was up all night thinking about like, what if we missed our flight? How could this have happened? I can't believe where we are. Like, what if something else goes wrong? Because it's all been bad luck for us. We woke up because it was so cold. We were all shivering, and we we moved to a warmer spot that wasn't at the gate. And in the Denver airport, there's, like, elevators that go up, and there's a floor, and then they go up again. And we slept on that floor there, like my mom and sister did. I just stayed awake and sat beside them. And when they woke up, we they went to the bathroom. We went, all went to the bathroom, freshened up a bit, went to Chick-fil-A, got some breakfast. Anyway, so we took our flight. It was a small, old flight. Barely anyone was in it to Great Falls. And when we arrived at Great Falls, our grandparents were waiting for us. We were just so relieved to be almost home. And we put on the fresh clothes from our suitcase and changed, brushed our teeth in the bathroom. And then we got in our grandparents' car. We told them, like, again, what had happened. Um, and our passports were being mailed to our house. My grandparents don't live in the same city I live in. They live three hours away. So the plan was for us to drive for our grandparents to drive us to where they live, to their house, and we're gonna spend the night and in the morning. They're gonna take us to Calgary, but what had happened is our really good family friends had decided to meet us in between. This is where my grandparents live, and then this is Calgary, and this is where they were gonna meet us. So our grandparents would drive us here, they would drive here, they would pick us up and take us to Calgary. So that's what happened, and we got home super late. We finally got home. It was really nice to get home, be home, and um, we rescheduled Mexico. I got back yesterday. Um, we didn't end up going with our family and friends, but that's alright. And I got back yesterday. We went for seven days instead of ten. But, yeah, I got back yesterday. And that was my story. That was my hectic Christmas break, a week during Christmas break. And I don't want anyone to ever have to go through that experience again because... I know it was a mistake, it could have been prevented if we had our passports with us and didn't leave them there. Um, the lady who checked the plane said she checked the pocket and she didn't. Like the customer service could have been better there. They kind of just like shoot us away and then at Airline Raspberry, which is kind of owns Airline Blueberry, they were super helpful, they were super nice. Um, and just like be careful when you're traveling, make sure you have everything with you, make sure you don't mis make the same mistake that I did. And I know this sounds odd, but I'm kind of glad that that happened because it was an experience and there were good things in there. We got to reunite with people who we haven't been seeing in years. We met, met some new people, some new friends, and it was it was just a one an experience I would like to have happen once. I never want that to happen again. And um, I'm glad that we didn't end up going to Dallas to get new passports because we would have spent a lot of money and they had, would have turned up eventually. It's like kind of, this might sound odd, but it's faith that we didn't go. Because something could have happened while we were there. One of us, someone could have gotten hurt. Something worse could have happened when we were in Mexico. Like some, someone was trying, something was trying to warn us to not go. That's why we couldn't find our passports. We couldn't, I don't know, that's just what I believe. And I think that everything happens for a reason. And I think that... We lost our passports and we're stuck in Houston for a reason. I think we were meant to go to Mexico when we did go to Mexico, not then. So that was my story time and I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, please leave some video requests down below and thank you. I hope you have a great day. Bye!